Shalom, shalom. Kahalo, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Kakwadash. The minds of the apostles and elders of our Muslim were well. And salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth. Push the word and truth and sincerity. This is Iraq coming at you with another lesson. Um, this video is going to be on immigration and the and the so-called ice raids that are supposed to happen today. Um, dealing in ten major cities, uh, rounding up, uh, rounding up Issachar, you know, and other and other immigrants that were that are supposedly illegal in this country. Now, these ice raids were actually delayed. You know, they were delayed so they didn't happen today. But when you think about it. The ICE raids is nothing but a pretense to martial law, you know. The ICE raids are the least of your problems, you know, when it comes to America. That's the least of America's problems. The ICE raids is just another test run for martial law, just like with the Jade Helm uh, tests back in 2015 and 2016, you know. And I'm pretty sure they've been running those annually, but now on the more hush-hush. But the ICE raids is nothing but a pretense to all-out chaos. You know, and in those raids, let's say if these raids do happen, it's like it. Let's say if these raids do happen, you can't expect for people not to die. I'm gonna say it again. You can't expect for people not to die. People will die in these ice raids because you have these you have these trigger happy soldiers who are are told to by any means rid the country of you know of the of the of the infestation of immigrants, which. Most of the, what's most of these immigrants are Jake, you know, especially the the, the uh, Iskar coming over from uh, Mexico, man, you know. So with that, they're gonna be show, they're gonna be told, you know, if you find any any uh, uh, find any resemblance, I mean, it's like if you find any resistance, you have to neutralize, you know. Let me get into this article just really quick on because the the ice rage were. They were um, delayed, but guess what? They're still mobilizing for roundups, you know? The immigrants are still mobilizing as if the ice raids are going to happen because sooner or later, whether the public knows about it or not, the raids will happen, you know? And whole communities are getting ready. This is uh, from the Washington Post. It says, despite delay of ice raids, immigrant communities mobilize for roundups. It says, President Trump's decision to postpone the mass arrests of immigrant families with deportation orders offered a two-week reprieve to shaken cities and towns Sunday, but faith in immigration leaders said they will continue to mobilize for roundups in case talks between the White House and congressional Democrats break down. You know, so basically, they're saying, look, in case the talks don't work and they force it on us anyway, we're still going to get ready for it. Says so after Trump threatened raids a week ago. Immigrant, right, immigrant rights groups in Chicago, Washington, New York, and nationwide publicized emergency hotlines, alerted volunteers, and hastily arranged gatherings to teach immigrants what to do if an agent knocks on the door. Ex efforts that are ongoing since the president called off the raid Sunday, the arrests were set to begin Sunday. It's like a Saturday. It's like, I'll read that over. Efforts that are ongoing since the president called off the raid Saturday. The arrests were set to begin Sunday. We're ready. We're going to be vigilant, said Richard Morales, director of the Immigrant Rights Campaign for Faith in Action, a national faith-based network in more than 20 states. Whether it happens today or it happens in two weeks, our congregation, our clergy, they're ready to respond. I mean, they probably are going to use the churches as safe houses to house these immigrants. Trump said Democrats pushed him to postpone the raids as they work toward the possible deal on overhauling the nation's asylum laws and emergency spending legislation to provide an additional $4.5 billion, mostly for the Departments of Health and Human Services, and Homeland Security to deal with the record surge of Central American families and unaccompanied minors at the southern border. So they're creating this, this deal and these raids for Jake, man, you know? This isn't talking about immigrant families from from uh, European from Europe or from from uh, from the Middle East. This is talking about uh, immigrants from south of the border, man. Which is Issachar, which is Northern Kingdom, man. Issachar, you know, you have uh, Zebulun, you know, and anybody that comes up through South America, because mostly Issachar and Zebulun, man. 
You know, it says, but the president also was seeking greater, greater power to detain and deport migrant families and unaccompanied minors who cross the border legally and seek asylum because most are quickly released in the United States to await a court hearing and are rarely deported. Advocates say families and children are fleeing violence, hunger, and poverty, but Trump has said that loopholes in asylum laws are fueling the surge that he is willing to wield his levers to pry concessions from Democrats. He secured tougher enforcement measures from Mexico this month after threatening to impose tariffs on their exports. So now, what's happening is Trump is being a bully. It's a whole world, man. You know? And he's threatening other countries with tariffs if they don't give him aid. But that's going to force other countries to hate him. And to hate America. That's why this place is going to be destroyed by those other countries. But that's another topic for another video. But the point is, is that Esau is getting desperate now. You know? Because as the world is ending, he recognizes day by day that the world is coming to an end, you know, and that he has to make his move now, you know, and he's making his move starting with, starting with Jake, man, you know, and mass deportation and arrests has nothing on martial law. You know, he can, he can declare these raids and then just because, you know, the raids have gone on for a couple of days and because he's not satisfied with the result he can call nationwide martial law you know he doesn't have to have a reason you know due to the india in ndrp that obama signed the president can declare martial law in peacetime there had there, there doesn't have to be any war going on you know and for trump and his administration this is as good as a reason to declare martial law is than any you know so esau is is coming down on with the gauntlet man this Revelation 12 and 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. You know, and that great wrath is his, uh, his military might, you know. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he doesn't have a long time left to get his new world order in order, you know. He doesn't have all the time in the world like he used to, man. He has to get stuff done now. And that's why Trump is pushing to get things done now. You know, he didn't have to, you know, another president would have would have um, would have made that announcement a couple of months before the actual the actual date. He made it a week before, man. He They're pushing things faster and faster at a more rapid pace, you know, to get things done because they're desperate, you know. And when you look at those raids it's not going to just be a knock on the door. Hey, how you doing? Such and such and such. Uh, we're here for for Jacob, you know, for Jacob Morales or, or 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 Israel Gonzalez or something like that. It's not going. That's not how it's going to go. These raid when you when you look at a raid when somebody raids a house when the police raid a house. The front door is is uh what do you call it? Battering rammed in, you know. If the knock on the door doesn't work or it doesn't persist or or you see resistance. That front door is going to be battered rammed in. Might be bad. Might be rammed in from the front and the back. You know, and there are going to be drones overhead. You know, and there are going to be snipers on the rooftops of other houses. This isn't just going to be going to be a simple. Uh, hey, how you doing? Come with, please come with me. You know, this is going to be all out, an all out. Um, what do you call it? Occupation, man. You know, an all out uh, war. On on uh on Issachar, man. This is uh Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse second. Yeah, chapter fifteen verse fifteen. It says, "For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand." You know, so matter of fact, let me go up. Verse fourteen says, "Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh." And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. So there's going to be a point of all out chaos. It might be when they kick off the raids. It might, it might be after that. But sooner or later, those raids are going to, are going to be a stepping stone to the greater martial law, you know, and there's going to be a time where there's going to be one nation fighting against another, man. You know, sooner or later, you think, uh, Issachar is going to go quietly. Hell no. You know, and you think, you think, you know, 
other Eskarites and you know, and other uh, and other Israelites, so to you know, period, are going to just stand for that? Hell no. You know, this could spark an all-out civil war. You know, it says, "For there shall be sedition among men, meaning uprisings." Matter of fact, let's go to this word "sedition" really quick. It says, conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch, you know, so it's, so it's a uh, rebellion, you know, so let's go back in, in this again, it says, for there shall be sedition among men, or there shall be rebellion among men, you know, in the United States, and this, this raid party is enough to cause a, an all-out rebellion or a civil war says invading one another and they shall not regard their kings nor princes you know so that and that you're not going to care about the police or law enforcement when the law enforcement is the one that's terrorizing the people you know it says in the course of their actions shall stand in their power a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able and this is the point where you got your quarantines or not your quarantines but your uh blockades man you know in this case of just martial law you have your blockades you know you're going to have your your uh, bridges that are going to be um, be demolished, you know, on the highways, just to contain the rebellion within one city, you know. It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, you know, because of the pride of who? The pride of the people, man, all around you. The houses shall be destroyed, and the men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. And spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You know, so you're going to have those those raids spark into martial law. And that martial law sparks into a civil uprising. And that civil uprising can spark into all-out chaos, you know. Now, you have neighbor fighting against neighbor. You know, not just against law enforcement, but now it's every man for themselves, you know. It says, it says, because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And what do you think they're going to do within martial law? They're going to confiscate all the food from their local supermarket. You know, everything from the restaurants, everything from uh, the small little indie coffee shops or the small little little gas stations. And they're going to heap it up for uh, and seize it as government property. So there's going to be a lack of food. So there's going to be neighbor fighting against neighbor and and break into, into each other's houses and for food, man. And killing each other over food, you know? There's going to be gunshots ringing all over the place. You think, uh, you know, the you think the, uh, the east side of Milwaukee is bad or south side of Chicago, you know, or the north north side of Milwaukee. You think, you think these cities are bad. Just wait until martial law and all hell breaks loose, you know? Is Jeremiah nine twenty one? It says, "For death has come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces, to cut off the children without, and the young men from the streets." And that's exactly what's going to happen, man. You know that our children and young men are going to be are going to be cut off. They're going to be destroyed. You know they're going to be going to be murdered in the streets. You know. It says, "Speak this, speak thus saith the Lord: Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field." And as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. You know, so people, it's going to be so much death and it's going to happen so fast that people aren't going to have time to pick up the body and sit the body to a morgue and do an autopsy and have a funeral and all that. No, that's going to be over with. None of that is going to exist because there's not going to be time. You're going to be too busy fleeing for your life, you know. Because the Lord has a controversy with the people in this land, you know, and that, and his, what, and when the Lord has a problem, is usually followed by mass death, you know, which is exactly what the Lord has in store. So this ice raid is the least of anyone's problems in the United States, you know. This is Jeremiah sixteen and one it says the word of the Lord came unto me saying, "Thou shalt." It's like I'm starting three. It says for thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place. And concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. So that's everyone in Babylon. Everyone. So they shall die 
of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. You know, so they're not going to be buried, or there's not going to be any funeral processions for these people, man. You know, I think they're going to have a funeral for somebody that, that, that gets shot in an ice raid, you know, that doesn't want to be deported back to Mexico. You think Iskar is going to take that line down? Hell no. What do you think they're going to get a funeral? Hell no. So then they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, you know, because there's going to be a lack of food. And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, you know. So their body is just going to be a mass bodies everywhere, man, you know, just from the from the death of being, you know, of house raids alone, you know. This thing can turn into a bloodbath, these raids, you know, which can in turn turn into a civil war and martial law, you know, which is ultimately going to be the end goal, you know. This is just a test to see how, how the people will react, man, you know. But that's all I had, you know, just be mindful that martial law is on the way and every step that they're pushing towards a police state is bringing it closer and closer, you know. That's all that's happening. This is just another step for martial law. So I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, the honest the apostles and Elders Grand Millicent and Well, and salutations to the brethren on four corners of the earth, pushing the word and in truth and in sincerity. Shalom.